What's going on guys? Darcizzle here from Darcizzle Offshore and today I have some yellowtail snapper to fillet and I figured since I have that for dinner why not go ahead and do another how-to video a fillet tutorial on how to fillet a yellowtail snapper. So my yellowtail snappers in here. I don't have that many but I got a, a couple for dinner and I went fishing with Jamie my friend Chef Jamie out of Marathon a couple days actually yesterday and uh, so we are just going to fillet these snappers now. It was a little, little bit of a slow day out there, but you know what? That's fishing. So let me get the other one out. All right. So we got some different size ones here, and if you, I'm sure you know about yellowtail snapper, but they're a fun fish to catch. They're delicious too. It's a fun family event that you can go do with your your family. It's just awesome, and they're super delicious too. The, these yellowtail are actually not really that big, but of course they are legal but they get huge. They get between easily an average three to four pounds, even five pounds. So those are big fish and these fight really hard at this size as well. So um, before I get into playing, I just want to show you real quick some of my knives. Uh, I, I Previously in my other filet videos, I was using Bubble Blade knives and I love their knives. I've always loved their products and now I'm sponsored by them. So they sent me a couple of their new products that they have and I'm going to be trying one of these out today. But I just want to show you, this is the 6 inch Turkinator in the mossy oak camouflage color. So you can see it's super cool looking, I love it. And these handles are non-slip, non-slip grip. So no matter how wet your hands or slimy your hands are, these knives are not going to slip on you, which is what Bubba Blade made these knives for, it's for fishermen. So this is perfect and also a matching little a holster for it. And then this is the blade that I always use on a regular basis before I was even sponsored by Bubble Blade. And this is a 7 inch tapered flex. If you like a flexible knife, which I do, this is a perfect knife for you to use as well as this one. This one is very flexible too. So this one's the one I always use and you can check out my other fillet tutorial videos in my playlist and just search it on my channel. And then also I want to show you this little cool little guy which is a brand new product. This is the little Sculpin pocket knife sweet little pocket knife with the same non-slip handle pretty awesome and then I'm not going to use this today but I you know you should have it when you're playing you always should have a sharpening tool with you this is a 10 inch sharpening steel this is the proper way to sharpen knives and um, you can look up even online how to do it it's very simple I think you go at a 20 degree angle I don't need to use it today because my knives are pretty new uh, but I just wanted to show you so that's really cool too now this is just a few of the many products that Bubba Blade Knives makes but uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of their newer products and the ones that I use. But if you're interested in checking out fillet knives or interested in purchasing one, check out Bubble Blade. I'm going to go ahead and leave the links down in the description below for each one of these knives and also their website so you can go check out their different products and whatnot. But, um, you know, for me, they're very affordable. And when I say that, I mean, like, I'm a firm believer in you get what you pay for. So, in for me, I believe these are very affordable for fishermen and honestly, I've had one of these knives that has lasted me like five years and I'm still using it to this very day. So these are excellent knives, well worth the price and they're going to last you a long time and literally I would say in the last two weeks too, every boat I've been on there's been a bubble blade, some type of bubble blade product and I swear it's very true. So people love them and uh, you can check that down in the description below. So today, instead of using my normal knife, the 7 inch tapered flex, tapered flex I'm going to use the brand new Turkinator. I love this handle. I think it's so cool and it's a little bit of a shorter blade as you can see. So I'm going to use this and see how it works for me. And let's see. First off, I want to sh show you, tell you real quick is put on a glove if you don't want to get spined or get poked. These fish are very sharp. Um, I would recommend it to you if you don't fillet a lot of fish because it will happen to you. So put on a glove on one of your hands when you're handling these fish and filleting them. It's going to save you a lot of pokes and hurting, your fingers hurting and all that stuff. So I'm not going to do it today, but I just want to give you that's a good tip. Um, so also make sure when you're filleting fish that you do have your saltwater bucket so you can dump your fish into it. All right, so to start off, this is a standard method to fillet a lot of fish. I'm just going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to go ahead and insert my knife right here. I'm doing it right along the edge of his back right here on his spine and I just went on the edge here so I just kind of made an opening and now I'm just going to go right along his back. Simple. And then when I got back here, kind of just poke it through the tail, push it out. Now I'm going to make a cut right here by his head 
kind of at an angle down in, but right here is all hard, so you won't be able to cut that. But just kind of cut right in there, like so, and make your cut. And then this is where we're going to go ahead and kind of just take the fillet and take it off. But also, I know a lot of people like to eat these fish whole, which you can totally do. Um, we just don't do that here. But you would just gut the fish and then cook it whole and then uh, remove the scales as well. But you can see here what I'm doing is just I'm working my knife at an angle and just sliding it all the way down his back, all the way to the bottom of the fish. And you can see I'm just sticking my knife right here, taking out the skin, separating it. And you can see my fillet is really nice right here. I'm just going along the bone. This, this, the uh, spine right here doesn't really stick out too much, so you're not gonna really have to worry about that. But there are pin bones here. All fish have pin bones. So you just wanna make sure you kind of pop those pin bones and then follow it all the way down like this. And then kind of let me give it a little bit more of a cut there. I should have done that before. And then kind of just follow the rib cage down. A lot of the times I don't like to open up the belly because you don't want all that guts and stuff all over your fresh fillet. So I kind of like just go over the rib bones there, and uh, that's my method, and it works for me. So that's one fillet. And once again, this is a standard method that you can use with all different kinds of fish. Standard snappers, groupers, dolphin, you name it, mahi-mahi, dolphin, whatever you want to call it. But all types of fish, you can use this method. It works great, and it's just one way to eat the fish without having any of the skin or if you don't want to have the whole fish. So it's just the perfect method. And once again, I'm just going to make my cut right here on this side of them, like so. Then I'm just going to run my knife once again and do the same thing. Just find a hole right here on the spine at the top and then just work the knife all the way down. Follow the rib cage. All right. I'm going to flip it around. I'm a lefty. I don't want to poke myself. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start stripping the meat off the bones. And it comes off really easy. So it shouldn't be too difficult to do. And since it's a smaller fish as well, it could be a little tough to get the fish, to get a lot of the meat out because you're just handling a smaller fish. With bigger fish, it's a little easier. So just like that. Just like that. And then kind of just work your knife like that. Get off the skin where it's still attached. And then I'm just going to finish up with the pin bones here, break them and then work it all the way down, just like that. All right, and you can see how I left the innards intact pretty much. This is not opened up and I left the rib bones, rib cage bones right there. So that way your meat is a lot easier to handle and you don't have any of that gunk all over your, your fresh meat. And then also, well, before we get to the skinning here, a lot of people like to keep the skin on and cook yellowtail, which is a great way to do it because yellowtail actually kind of, once it's cooked and you touch a fork with it, it kind of just breaks apart. It's a really delicious meat. It's not too firm. So you would like, if you like that, you could put it on the grill with the skin on and cook it like that too. It works. But for me, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the skin off. That's how I prefer my fish. So um, you could do it any way you want. So when it comes to skinning, you just want to use, I'm using the same knife. And I'm just going to kind of keep my finger here, keep it close to the edge so you have leverage at, to the edge of the table. And keep my fingers here, and then just start working the knife at a 45 degree angle underneath the meat like this. And then once you get that, I'm kind of get a more leverage here and hold, hold this tight, the skin. And then just work your knife all the way down as you hold the skin. Kind of just side to side, all the way through. That's done. One side. Do the other side real quick. Get a firm grip. This knife is awesome. Love this new knife. This is the first fish I've played with this knife. All right. And then as far as the red bloodline goes, you don't. I don't really take it out of a yellowtail. You can if you want, um, but that doesn't really affect your taste or anything. So I just keep it how, as it is. So the whole fillet, but all you want to do is take the pin bones out, and I can feel them. If you run your fingers right across here, you'll just feel the bones right in there. So I'm just going to make a cut like that on the side of the bones and then on the other side. And then that takes the bones out. All the bones are in there. Fish food. And now you have a delicious fillet to cook of yellowtail snapper. 
And once again, this method works great with all different types of fish, and especially if you don't want to actually cook the fish and just remove the meat off of them, it's a perfect way to do it. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from this video. I'm gonna go ahead and start filleting the rest of our fish for a delicious dinner, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And once again, I didn't have that bucket with me, but you need to have your five gallon bucket of salt water to put your fish in to rinse off. Don't rinse off your fresh meat in fresh water. And once again, you can see the detail of that in my previous filet videos, which will be linked down below in the description. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Until my next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching. Thank you.